Okay, uh, good evening everyone. This is the June 3rd, 2015 meeting of the Planning Board of the Town of Smithtown. We are going to begin it with the Pledge of Allegiance and you're all invited to join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The first item on the agenda this evening, the planning department is recommending the following items for adjournment that we have insufficient information to act on. Under part one, item one, 2012-04, Storybook Homes. Item two, 2012-02, Carlson Associates. Item three, 2009-05, FB4 Realty. Item four, 773 Scholar Estates. Item five, waiver request 1135, Tommy Platt. Item 6, 1133 Oakwood Valley Estates in Wisconsin. Item 7, 280A Olivia Estates. Item 8, 1039 Garden Gate in St. James. Item 9, 2010 06 KBC Holdings. And item 10, number 911A Glen Hill Northern. Mr. Chairman, these are the items the Planning Department is recommending for adjournment this evening. Is there anybody present who wishes to be heard on any of the items which were just read regarding which the Planning Department is requesting an adjournment? Seeing not a motion, please. Mr. Chairman, motion to adjourn the items recommended by the department. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, none. So adjourned. Mr. Chairman, the next item on the agenda under part two is item 11, a performance bond extension for subdivision 845 Gately Plant in St. James. The applicant requests to retroactively extend the performance bond for a period of two years to end on October 2nd, uh, 2014, and a subsequent extension to October 22nd, uh, excuse me, October 2nd, 2016, in order to obtain more time to complete construction and all necessary improvements. The applicant received conditional final approval for this two-lot subdivision from the Planning Board in February 1990. A performance bond estimate in the amount of $5,027 was approved by the Board and subsequently signed by the Chairman. The applicant submitted the bond monies and all related materials to the town, and the town board accepted the performance bond on October 2nd, 1990. Planning board approval for this performance bond expired on October 2nd, 2012. The applicant submitted a performance bond extension application to the planning department on February 26, 2015, and it was distributed to all departments concerned for review. The engineering and highway departments have no objection to the performance bond extension request and have determined that the bond amount is sufficient to cover all remaining improvements. The Traffic Safety Department has not commented. The Planning Department has no objection to the request. The Planning Department offers the following resolutions for the Board's consideration. Be it resolved that the Planning Board hereby approves an extension of the performance bond for the subdivision known as Gately Platt number 845 for a period of two years to expire on October 2, 2014. And be it resolved that the Planning Board hereby approves an extension of the performance bond for the subdivision known as Gately Platt 845 for a period of two years to expire on October 2nd, 2016. Anybody present on behalf of the applicant on this matter? Please come up and for the record, give a name and address and relationship to the applicant. You are the applicant. You have the affidavit of posting? Yeah. You can hand that in. Name and address for the record, please. Helen Gately, 117 Woodlawn Avenue, St. James. Are you the applicant, ma'am? Yes. And did you hear the uh, analysis and review that was just read yes. by the uh, planning department? Yes. And also the two proposed resolutions? Yes. Are you in agreement with all that? Yes. Is there anybody in the audience who wishes to be heard on this particular matter? <clears throat> any questions from any member of the board on this particular matter? Just a minor question. Since this dates back to 1990, do you anticipate actually completing construction by the end of this performance bond extension in 2016? Probably, yes. Probably. Is there anything that has caused this extenuating delay of 26 years from the original approval? The kids were small. I needed the lot. <laughs> Understood. I, I was just curious because it seemed a long time, but I it's know... It's a long time, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I did put the trees in, but unfortunately... 
new neighbors moved in and they cut them down. <laughs> any other questions from any other members of the board? Seeing none, a motion for the first extension, please. In a matter of Gately Platt, number 845, motion to approve an extension of the performance bond for the subdivision known as Gately Platt for a period of two years to expire on October 2nd, 2014. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, none. That uh, motion carries unanimously, and that resolution is adopted. And please, a motion for the second resolution. Motion to approve an extension of the performance bond for the subdivision known as Gately Platt number 845 for a period of two years to expire on October 2nd, 2016. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, none. That motion is also is carried unanimously, and that resolution is adopted as well. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, the next item on the Planning Board's agenda is item 12, a performance bond extension request uh, for 1135 for Tahami Platt in St. James. The applicant requests to retroactively extend the performance bond approval for the subdivision known as Tahami Platt 1135 for a period of two years to end on January 19, 2017 in order to obtain more time to complete construction and all necessary improvements. The Planning Board approved this two-lot subdivision on January 19, 2011. A performance bond estimate in the amount of $26,440 was approved by the board and subsequently signed by the chairman. The applicant submitted the bond monies and all related materials to the town, and the town board accepted cash in lieu of a performance bond on January 3, 2012. The planning board's approval of this performance bond expired on January 19, 2015. The applicant submitted a performance bond extension application on April 27, 2015 to the planning department, and the application was distributed to all departments concerned for review. The engineering and highway departments have no objection to the performance bond extension request and have determined that the bond amount is sufficient to cover all remaining improvements. The traffic safety department has no comments. The planning department has no objection to this request. The planning department offers the following resolution for the board's consideration. Be it resolved that the planning board hereby approves a retroactive extension of the performance bond for the subdivision known as Tahami Platt for a period of two years to expire on January 19, 2017. Anybody present on behalf of the applicant? Sir, please come up to the microphone, uh, give your name and address and relationship to the applicant, unless you are the applicant. You'll just tell us that. I'm Walter Giglio, 34 Frank Avenue, Farmingdale, New York. And I am um, actually co-venturing the uh, project with the applicant. My name is uh, Walter Giglio, working with Mitch Ciro, who was the original applicant. Who are you working with? Mitchell Ciro, who was the original applicant. I'm more or less acting as his representative this evening. Okay, you're here we're, on his behalf. Yes, we're involved with the project as well. Okay. Have you heard the review and analysis uh, provided by the planning department? Yes, sir. And also the proposed resolution? Correct. I have heard that. You in agreement with all of that? Yes. Okay. Is there any questions from anybody in the audience or anybody in the audience who wishes to be heard on this matter? Any questions from any member of the board on this matter? Seeing none, a motion, please. Jim, the affidavit opposed to Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes, I have that. You, have it? you want to hand that in? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, motion please. Mr. Chairman, in the matter of Tuhami Platt number 1135, motion to extend the performance bond to January 19, 2017 in accordance with the department's recommendation. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. That motion carries unanimously and that resolution is adopted. Thank you, sir. Have a good Thank night. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, the next item on the agenda is item 13, a waiver request for subdivision 1138A, Ness Manor in Ness Consett. Uh, the request is to wa waive the requirement for the installation of sidewalks within the subdivision known as Ness Manor number 1138A. The map of Ness Manor was granted conditional final approval by the Planning Board on May 7, 2008. The request is to waive all 150 linear feet of sidewalks on both Excalibur Lane and Midwood Avenue. The engineering and highway departments have no objection to the waiver requests and the traffic safety department has no comment. The applicant has indicated that there are no sidewalks. 
The planning department has reviewed this request and determined that there are no sidewalks on Excalibur Lane, and the closest sidewalks on Midwood Avenue are approximately 2,280 feet, 0.4 miles south of the subject site. Excalibur Lane is a dead-end residential, residential access street that is not in close proximity to pedestrian destinations, so it is unlikely that sidewalks will be needed at this location in the foreseeable future. Excalibur Lane has not been identified as an area where sidewalks are needed. Therefore, the planning department has no objection to waiving the sidewalks on Excalibur Lane. Midwood Avenue has been identified as a location where sidewalks are needed. Midwood Avenue is a sub-collector street collecting Nichols Road to Gibbs Pond Road and is the location of Tackin Elementary School. However, most of the sidewalks on Midwood Avenue are located near the elementary school, approximately 0.4 miles south of the subject site, and there are no immediate plans for expansion of the sidewalk in this area. Further, there are few, if any, locations on Midwood Avenue where there will be future subdivisions, and recent subdivisions in this area have not been required to install sidewalks or contribute to the sidewalk fund. Given the foregoing and the limited frontage of the subdivision, the Planning Department does not object to the sidewalk waiver on Midwood Avenue. The Planning Department offers the following resolution for the Board's consideration. Be it resolved that the Planning Board hereby approves the request of Salvatore uh, Guerra to waive 150 linear feet of sidewalks on Excalibur Lane and Midwood Avenue within the subdivision known as Nest Manor, number 1138A. Anybody present on behalf of the applicant? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Vincent Tremarco. I represent the applicant. I've heard <coughs> the recommendation of the planning department, have no objection to, to it. I do have a question, though. We also applied for, um, uh, I guess, a release of the performance bond. Um, so I don't know when that's happening. All the public improvements have been completed, except for the sidewalks, which are going to be waived. Well, let's just uh, stick with this one for one second. Do you have your affidavit of posting? Or has that already no, been? We, it was adjourned. Oh, it was adjourned once yeah. before. Okay, okay. And your question is about the release of the performance bond? Right. Has that been, that's been submitted as well? Yes. Uh, anybody, can you guys uh, help us out uh, as to where we are with that? Uh, I have to find out. It goes through engineering, traffic, highway. They have to go and out planning. and inspect? Correct. Yeah. Could, could, we'll, we'll do it as could soon as the we appropriate can. Uh, contact be made to ask them to... Absolutely. Go do what they have to do so that if it's appropriate to release the bond that we can do that? I'll call engineering in the morning to get okay. it going. Thank you. All That's right. fine. Uh, Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, any questions from any members of the board on this? Seeing none in motion, please. In the matter of Nest Matter number 1138A, motion to adopt the resolution as read in accordance with the recommendation of the planning department. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. That motion carries unanimously, and that resolution is adopted. Mr. Chairman, the next item on the agenda this evening is uh, item 14, and this is a request for recommendations from the Board of Zoning Appeals. The Board of Zoning Appeals has requested a recommendation with regard to variances associated with the pending request to subdivide a parcel into two, into two one-acre single-family residential lots. The map of Open Meadow 1156 was the subject of public hearings on January 7th, 2015 and February 4th, 2015. This subdivision could not be approved at that time inasmuch as the application is not in conformance with the zoning ordinance and the planning board does not have the authority to grant all of the variances needed if the subdivision were to be approved. Pursuant to New York State town law, boards of zoning appeals are authorized to approve area variances in pending subdivisions and the planning department recommended that the application be adjourned in order to give the applicant um, an opportunity to apply to the Board of Zoning Appeals. The applicant applied to the BZA on April 20th, 2015, and the BZA hearing occurred on May 12th, 2015. The BZA is required by town law to ask the Planning Board for a recommendation. In a letter dated May 14th, 2015, the Board of Zoning Appeals has requested a recommendation on the pending variances. The Planning Board does not have the authority to approve these variances because they increase the legal yield of the subdivision and do not meet the Planning Board's criteria for variances and they do not have a public purpose or benefit. The following variances have been requested. For Lot 1, the rear lot, to reduce the minimum road frontage from 40 feet to 25 feet, a 38% variance. To reduce the minimum lot width from 150 feet to 25 feet, an 83% variance. To reduce the minimum rear yard depth from 100 feet to 75 feet, 25% variance, 
to increase the maximum paving in the front yard from 25% to 40%, a 60% variance, and to increase the paving, maximum paving in the side yard from 25% to 88%, 252% variance. For lot two in the front, to reduce the minimum lot width from 150 feet to 121 feet, a 19% variance. To reduce the minimum side yard depth from 24 feet to 23%, a 4% variance, which is existing. To reduce the minimum lot area um, from 43,560 square feet, one acre, to approximately 38,528 square feet, a 12% variance. A variance to disturb environmentally sensitive lands in the form of steep slopes, and a variance to build within 10 feet of environmentally sensitive lands in the form of steep slopes. The planning department recommends that in making a recommendation to the Board of Zoning Appeals, the planning board not duplicate the role of the BZA, which is to consider the variances in light of spe specific criteria, but limit their scope of their recommendation to subdivision impacts. The design of the proposed subdivision would likely result in negative safety impacts in terms of emergency access. When houses are hidden from view from the street, it increases the response time for fire, police, and emergency services to locate and reach the building. The narrow width of the flagpole, which could easily be easily blocked by vehicles or obstructed during severe storms, also increases response time. Additionally, the nearest hydrant would be 700 feet from the house. The minimum lot width and frontage requirements of the R43 zoning district help assure that driveways are adequately spaced along the road frontage. Allowing the proposed reductions in the required lot width and road frontage would likely have a safety impact at this location because the proposed access would add an additional curb cut along a curve on a heavily trafficked and hilly route. The proposed nine design would likely have negative impacts on privacy, noise, and character of the neighborhood. The proposed long driveway between existing homes will reduce privacy and increase noise for residents on both sides as it allows cars to drive past the side and rear of immediately adjacent properties. The usable lot area for the rear lot is approximately 0.8 acres. The flag lot shape itself is not in keeping with the character of the surrounding area. All of the other properties on this block meet or exceed the road frontage and lot width minimums. Of the 1,139 homes in Fort Salonga south of 25A, only 14, 1.2% are flag lots, of which only five were approved by the planning board, the last in 1986. The average acreage of these flag lots is 1.68 acres, 68% greater than this proposal. In some, in some circumstances in different neighborhoods where lots are oversized and all houses will be visible from the street, the variances requested are not as likely to produce undesirable impacts, and in some circumstances where the total yield of a subdivision remains unchanged, certain types of flag lots with short flagpoles can result in better subdivision design that reduces the amount of clearing and impervious surfaces that be required with the traditional cul-de-sac. However, the map of open meadow does not fall into these categories. For the reasons discussed above, it appears that this proposal would result in undesirable safety and general welfare impacts on emergency access, traffic safety, privacy, noise, and character. Therefore, the planning department recommends that the planning board issue a recommendation to the Board of Zoning Appeals that it deny the pending variances associated with the subdivision. The planning department offers the following resolution for the board's consideration. Be it resolved that the planning board hereby recommends that the Board of Zoning Appeals deny the variances associated with the subdivision known as Map of Open Meadow 1156 for the following reasons. One, they're likely to create undesirable safety impacts because of increased emergency response time and limited emergency access and egress. Two, they're likely to create an undesirable general welfare impact because of the reduction in privacy and increase in noise resulting from the location of the proposed driveway and home. And three, they're likely to generate an undesirable general welfare impact of a change of neighborhood character resulting from increased paving and substandard lot dimensions. And attached to your memo, you have a pr proposed subdivision map. Thank you, Chairman. May I uh, yes. say something? Please do. The applicant should not be penalized for the width of the flagpole. Um, I didn't catch this in the memo, but he made it narrow at my recommendation. He originally had it wider. So uh, he shouldn't be penalized for following my recommendation. Uh, in other words, you're saying on lot one, Right. The part of the lot that goes from the road up to the wider part of the lot, 
was originally wider on their initial correct ap application correct. or presentation, and you asked them to reduce it. My, my suggestion was to make it about 25 feet wide. And how much was it when they? I don't remember. I think 40 or 50. Uh, okay. Hmm. So you're saying that uh, that okay. that that part of the analysis is really not to be held against the applicant because they came in with a proposal with a wider base uh, of the part that goes from the road up to the back part of the lot and at your request they narrowed it down. Now I'm not so sure. Alex is telling me that the original map shows it only 25 feet wide. Well let's see what Mr. Tramarco says. Mr. Tramarco, uh, on this issue and the others, do you, you have the memo? He just read? Uh, I have the memo. I got it 3.30 today. Oh, well, you all, you're maybe thinking along the same lines as me because looking at this memo, uh, someone in your shoes might want to go through it point by point I and do. respond to the four or five reasons they have on the second page of the memo as to why they think this shouldn't be granted. Uh, I absolutely do, Mr. Chairman. And since and you got it at 3.30 this afternoon, I would certainly welcome an application on your part or would consider an application for an adjournment to give you some time to go back, read this, and come back with a, uh, uh, a response on all the points that they say that the reasons why they say these shouldn't be given uh, this application. I absolutely uh, do request uh, an adjournment to the next meeting. Also, if you look at the date, it was dated June 1, but we got it on June the 3rd, so I don't know what happened there. If I would have gotten it on June 1, I would have been prepared. I understand. Uh, it, it, uh, I looked at this, and I see the whole ball of wax comes down to the four or five paragraphs on the second page right. where they're giving item by item why they don't think we should approve this, so I think you should be afforded an opportunity in representing your client to come back and address all those points after you've had an opportunity to think about them and, and come up with what you would want to say. Yeah. The only question I have is on the issue of the, um, the emergency access to the, to the back lot, which seems to be an issue here. Now, it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that regardless of how much frontage the back lot has, the extent or quality of the access to the back lot or by any emergency or other vehicle would be determined by the driveway, the width of the driveway. In other words, if you had a 20-foot wide driveway mm -hmm. on a 25-foot wide or 40-foot wide stretch of property, or if you had a 20-foot driveway on a 100-foot width property, but it's all wooded because we know in Fort Salonga it's a little bit hillier in some sections than the rest of the town and maybe wooded more. I don't see the difference really, um, in other words, the difference is not really caused by the narrowness of the lot, it's caused by the access of the driveway, and you can have the same issue presented on a lot with 100 foot footage that only has a 20 foot wide driveway through a bunch of trees. It, right, yeah, and certainly 20 feet should be more than wide enough because it's like a road, but if it's a 10 foot, it's only one lane wide, right? Correct. So but this, this proposal here is 25 feet, right? The um, driveway itself, I believe, is 15. I, I believe the applicant wanted to make it wider than, than I was recommending, the pavement. Um, My only point is that a lot of it appears to be being made about access by emergency vehicles, which is a valid consideration. But what I'm saying is that the fact that the lot is only 40 feet wide really doesn't affect that as much as how wide the driveway is, because right. his lot could be 100 feet of frontage with, if it's got a lot of trees on it and the driveway is only 25 or 20 feet wide, that's the same access as a 20-foot driveway on a 25-foot frontage. So the frontage doesn't really, to me, make that much of a difference. And that issue is how <laughs> wide the driveway is. Was the driveway narrowed down because of the screening? I, I'll have to find out. I mean, I think they had screening on the original drawing. And um, I think they modified it a little bit on this drawing. It seems academic because I'm, I see 25 feet, even if it were 50 feet, whether you recommended it, Dave, or not, mm -hmm. I don't know that anybody on Sunken Meadow Road would see the proposed residence on the rear lot, whether it was a 25-foot wide 
for a 55-foot wide entry, whether the trees were there or not, it is so long and the house so far recessed behind the house nearer the road, I don't know that an emergency vehicle would ever see a structure that far back. Right. That, that, that's a different issue. Yes, agreed. Uh, whether or not it can be seen is one issue, and getting to it is a second issue. But you're not sure whether or not you asked for this 25 foot rather than 40 feet, or you're? I'm, I'm almost positive that Mr. Tremarco and, and his client met with me early in the year, of like about January, I'm not sure exactly when, and I believe that they proposed a wider property and a wider pavement. And my recollection is, as I suggested, that for a single home, that one lane driveway would be adequate, provided that there was some place midway where if vehicles were coming head on toward each other, one could pull out of the way and so the other could get by. Um, that's my recollection. And I believe that when he came in with this proposal, it was a little, the pavement was a little wider than I had recommended, wider than necessary. Well, I don't, I, I don't know how Mr. Tremarco and his client feel about uh, you know, changing from their original proposal to your proposal, but the only thing I could say, and again, I wasn't part of the discussions, it's your recollection sure. and Mr. Tremarco's recollection perhaps, is that I don't know that it's equitable to uh, tell them to narrow down the driveway and the width of the lot and then advise us to recommend a denial based upon the fact that the lot is, is too narrow and the driveway is too narrow when we're the ones who told them to make it narrow to begin with. That was my point. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with your point, but there are certainly other factors to be addressed. Absolutely, yes. Maybe Mr. Tremarco can review his records and let us know whether or not there was a request from Dave. Maybe he remembers. Yeah, well, I don't know, offhand, I maybe. I remember, and so does my client, that we had a 20-foot wide pavement uh, proposed, and David suggested a narrower okay, gotcha. driveway. That was his suggestion. Understood. All right, then we need to keep that in mind if we're going to review your recommendations for rejection as to what we're going to wait or how we're going to apply weight for sure. important considerations. I, I just don't want them penalized for following my recommendation. Of course, that's what, that would be uh, agreed, not agreed. fair. <laughs> agreed. Okay. So let me ask you this. If he went back to his original plan, would that uh, help alleviate some of the concerns set forth in the analysis? Um, the, obviously, the answer is yes. But it, then it brings up the other con concern about impacting the neighbor. I, I thought the best compromise was a one-lane driveway with a bulge halfway deep so that opposing traffic um, could bypass each other. And the reasoning is, is if you think a, a typical single-family home has five trips out and five trips in a day, the likelihood of two vehicles meeting on, uh, for one home is not very high. Um, but if it happened, there should be some place where someone could pull off to let the other one by. Has there been any contact from any of the neighbors received by you or anybody in the department regarding this application, expressing any concern about how wide the driveway is going to be? Not by me. I don't know about anyone else. I, one neighbor had spoken to me that that had some concerns with this. I don't know if they were specific to, um, to the driveway. And this has been posted, I would imagine, and properly advertised. Originally. See anybody here uh, making any objections to anything? So, is that a possibility though that they could go back to their original or maybe some compromise in between? Mm -hmm. Of course. Okay. Well, in any event, I'll leave that up to you, Mr. Tremarco, whether or not you're going to proceed based upon what he recommended that you do uh, or go back to your original proposal or something in between. And also, you're going to have time to comment on the reasons that they are recommending that we recommend a denial. Okay. If David is saying if we make the bubble in the driveway or we make the driveway wider, his recommendation would be to this board to approve it, then obviously right. I don't want to waste the He's time. He's not saying that, though. I know that. He's just saying it would be less <laughs> That's offensive. why I said if. Yeah, it would be less offensive if I'm understanding what he's okay. saying. I understand. So I have, I have maybe one. you could have a discussion or two with him between now and the next meeting and see if you both could see eye to eye on any of these things. If not, then we'll just go with what we have. Okay. We will. We'll, we'll meet. We'll try and meet with David again. We met with him a couple of times. It's not like we didn't meet. And we thought that this was the one that was most uh, uh, 
uh, receptive to the planning department. Right, but as he points out, for him to have you narrow it down and then have that as one of the reasons that he's recommending a denial, I know, right. <laughs> we won't characterize it, but you know, we all know what we're talking about. The only other question I have is, and maybe you can answer this now, or maybe you can answer it when we come back to finish this off, is there's been an issue of uh, not being able to see the residents from the road. Up in this area of the town, is, is it uncommon for uh, residents to be where it can't be viewed from the road? No, it's not uncommon at all. They're very treed and wooded properties. Most of the properties go back seven, 800 feet. Um, so uh, it's very possible that you can't see the house from the road, but you have mailboxes out right. in the street right. and you have different ways of identifying you know, that there's uh, people living in the back there somewhere. So that in this area of the town, that is a situation that's readily common? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they, they designed the lots, long and narrow it's lots. Pri Some people call it privacy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, well, I just wanted to, wanted to be clear, that's all. I have one question before you go. There's an existing log house at the rear of the property that's going to be on lot one, if we approve this. Is that log house now used in conjunction with the family currently occupying the existing one and a half story house? Or is it two separate families already living on the property? Well, it's the, the log house is vacant and it's going to be removed if the subdivision is granted. Has it been in recent memory occupied by a separate family from the family in the former East? owner, sure. They had I th I believe he built it for his son and his son lived there for I don't know how many years. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that being said, uh, Mr. Tremarco, how much time uh, do you think you need to uh, formulate a response to their recommendations? Do you think you could do it by the next meeting? I do. All right, so with that being said, um, with respect to the, uh, the matter of Nest Manor, I'm sorry, with, with respect to the matter of Open Meadow, Fort Salonga, number 1156, I move that this matter be adjourned to the June uh, 17th, 2015 meeting, being the next meeting of this board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. So adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Dave, when we return, can you confirm for us what objections you might delete if they went back to 40 feet? 40 foot? Um, 40 foot wide as opposed to width? 25 foot wide? Sure. Okay. I don't know that that's going to make a difference, but just out of curiosity, if it drops from five objections to four or to three, and maybe the three remaining aren't as serious, or maybe they're just as serious, you could give us a little insight. I, and I think there's one other thing if we could uh, look into. I believe it was on your list there. Let me just get back to that one. Yeah, on lot two, you you're talking about disturbing environmentally sensitive lands and building within 10 feet, steep slopes. Could we find out how steep the slopes are? Because we know, I think we define steep slopes as 15% or more. Mm -hmm. So sure. is this 16% or you know, 40% or 50%? Right. Just curious as to how steep the slopes are. Will do. OK. I think that's it. Chairman, motion to adjourn. Would that be in order? That would be that's definitely in order. Mr. Chairman, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. We are adjourned for the evening. Uh, but before we go for the evening, I want to just oh, recognize yes. uh, uh, Alex Wallach, who is um, leaving us. He's taking a senior position in the town of Babylon as a senior planner. Alex has been a tremendous asset to the planning department. Um, everything he's done has been above and beyond the call of duty, even when it's just part of his regular duty. And I uh, wish him all the luck in the world, and you know, we're going to miss him, and uh, our uh, loss is going to be Babylon's gain. So Alex, uh, we're going to miss you here, but best of luck to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And that. I might add that I hope as a senior planner you'll plan to come back to our town. <laughs> Anything's possible. Good. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.